Hey, what's going on, YouTube? Hey, Aaron here. Look who we got. We got Hive. Simpin. But we are in the Wooster. And we're going to try and get a good game. Kind of wanted an aircraft carrier game, but I might division up later and get that. Because that's probably the only thing this ship is going to be good for. It's like a larger Cleveland with a 32mm bow, but um, it only covers part of the... Uh, the ship there you can actually see the 25 millimeter plates from the side but we'll go over that at the end uh, if it turns into a good game uh, this ship is going to be basically the, the cleveland on steroids you, you do not want to get caught out in the open with this thing it has an above water citadel uh, so you can and will get going pretty easily you guys saw the ship multiple times wargaming gave it to me for a week and then the rental phase but basically you're just you want to be the uss machine gun Uh, from behind island cover. This auto aim tends to throw my shots everywhere. There's a fire. We actually have, we're running range right now with refill station. I, I spec this thing out for full DPM because that's honestly what you're. That's the only thing you're going to be good at um, is is just full DPM. And as I'm detected. What? The problem with uh, extended range is is that is what I'm running into right now is there's a ship on the opposite side of the map that has me spotted uh, because of my range. Refill station maybe adds a little bit too much to the range. Can I back up, please? Thank you. It's a Shima and a Kaba. I'm guessing the Kaba's over there. No, it's a, it's a Shima over there. Let's pop a radar and see if we can get lucky. Yeah. And we're going to want to turn out. You do have 32mm plating on both bow and stern. Yep. We're going to try and ruin this, di this guy's day. HE on most targets, but uh, AP on any time you can get a broadside Kaba, and you will do that. Switching back to the angle, so we're going to switch back to HE. It's probably going to go dark here. Oh, still detected by something. Complete miss. Okay. DJ. I think I've seen his name before. Did I interrupt like a hive count in? The torp simping? I hope not. Now, one problem you will run into is even with your 32mm bow, if this guy catches me on my deck, um, they're, they're, you have a 30mm deck, but again, I don't know how the armor works. Uh, and like you saw, you just take penetrations rather easily. So, a little bit of a risky turn. We saw his back guns fire, though, which probably means he was alternating his fire. What ship is this? Hipper. Team's got a lazy position on the opposite flank, which is fine. This map, this map is just atrocious. There's nowhere for these guys to go. Like this spawn right here is just—it's terrible. On both sides, honestly, you have to push either super aggressively, or 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 you, you can't. You know, you have to just sit in the back. There's there's no uh, in between. I'm trying to help our team by shooting a radar cruiser. A radar cruiser with more health or bigger health pool. Never mind. I don't. And as I was saying earlier about the range, with refill station, you definitely have too much range. I don't like playing my cruisers, especially my light cruisers, with that much range because it leads to very, very passive gameplay. And you you get you will get yourself way out of position with that range because you'll be kiting at 18 kilometers when and the, by the time you can go dark, you're 20 kilometers away from the nearest target. Back up, please. We have engine mod. If this guy catches me. Okay. 
Something we are not running, though, that may be an option for this thing is EOP. I, I don't like running EOP, especially since they quote-unquote nerfed it, although it was very kind of overpowered, so I don't mind the nerf. Uh, EOP adds uh, armor penetration to your HE shells, which the American 5-inch guns do not have. Uh, so you see a lot of shatters. AP shattering still? There we go. He's given enough of an angle that with punch through, we are able to... Well, there are more shatters. Nope. What? There, there, is there another ship sitting next to the Vladivostok? Because if so, then I just... If not, then I just uh, did something that should be almost impossible. Okay. We've got their team kind of trapped, so... Okay, that's a double fire. This hipper being here really isn't... Uh, That's a Yamo that's a Yamoto. Well, that's all that's left of their team. We'll go ahead and be aggressive with it. Try and get the high caliber here. Probably not gonna happen. But this will be a good first game, first look at the um at the yeah, what's it called? The Wooster, because for those people who haven't seen my video already, because we're we'll go out here and we'll go show you what happens when you do get penned. Yeah. Well, it wasn't terrible. We've had a pretty decent fire chance this game, 250-ish target hits, 10 fires, which is uh, more than I could say last night. <laughs> I had like 300 plus target hits for like two fires, so. Of course, though, we get the initial fire and then everyone else gets the, the best RNG on planet Earth. Did we get a fire? No. That's so much fun. It's gonna be game when he points out. GG's. Well, that's a good first look at the USS machine gun. Second on the board, 2200 experience. GG to those. Hive, sorry buddy. I hope he wasn't doing count-ins, but yeah, GG's to that, uh... To those people, we'll go ahead and throw that up on the tube. Just to, again, a first look. I'll try and get a much better game. You guys have seen this before, but let's go over the Wooster and why. Hopefully this, you know, it helped us radar the Kaba. I think the Kaba was a little bit out of position. Um, you know, we were spotted if he was paying attention, but regardless, like I said, I think he was out of position. Um, and, you know, balls deep in the cap like that is not a, an initial Kaba play, but he, he got the cap, so it ended up working for him, but he lost the majority of his health doing so. Um, so a radar cruiser nonetheless, but I don't think it's gonna, what I was trying to say is I don't think it's gonna solve the problem that uh, is currently in the game. Um, so, but it's all right, it's more radar on the board. 32 millimeter balance stern plating, but as you can see guys, unless you're just directly nose on to these guys, even a slight angle, they can just punch through um, that side plating there. And you'd be like, oh, Aaron, well, it's at angle. Yes, but it's 25 millimeters. Uh, so that can be overmatched by a lot of shit. At any angle. Any angle that can be overmatched. So, that's how you counter it. Uh, Yamas, GKs, any large caliber battleship battleship shells can just overmatch that at, uh, at uh, pretty much any angle. So, yeah. If you look at it, like I said, you, you, you do have a 32mm nose, but you just... You, most shells are coming at the ship like this. Or if you're up close, you know, like that. So, 30mm deck... Um, that could bounce uh, a good chunk, but you still get citadeled by, like, 406s. 
wait, thir no, thir 30 is... What is 30? 30 times 14.3. 4... 30 times... 14.3... I'm sorry, 429s. So you're safe from everything except for Yama currently, but when we get up to 4... Oh, no, Georgia too, 457s. Um, so they can all you through the deck the overmatch capability, but you will bounce a lot of other stuff. Um, but, you know, long-range plunging fires can still go through that deck. It's the angle at which it hits it, so you can still penetrate that. Like, for example, you have a 32 millimeter ass end, um, and while that can bounce everything except for Yama shells, if it's, because it's flat like this, if you're if you're going directly flat, for, you know, running away from someone, they can still punch that. They may not be able to citadel you, but they can still penetrate that. Um, and get, you know, like an armor penetration. For, like, you know, when you're you're not angled in your bow, you can still punch through the 32 millimeter bow with a multitude of calibers. It's the angle at which you, at you, at which you hit it. Um, but let's check out the stats. Survivability, 45,000. That's pretty, that's pretty good with a 19% torpedo reduction. Uh, the artillery, uh, we are running full memes. Uh, wait. Do, oh, I, I had the wrong build. Did I have the wrong build on here? I did. Son of a bitch, Aaron. One thing that just has to come soon is the ability to lock certain commander builds into certain ships. It just has to come. We were running full DPM with um, with Madden, but I apparently had Sharnhorst, which you don't need. What you do not need whatsoever. You could maybe run Kuznets off, but like you saw with it, beyond range or uh, refill station, the the legendary perk active, we had like 18 and a half kilometers. So, but let's look at the stats with the full DPM build. That's 4.3 second reload, which is pretty nutty, and 7.7 .7 second traverse, which is equally as nutty. 13% fire chance with uh, one of the fire perks selected, and uh, the AP shells actually do a lot. I don't know what the hell we citadel there. It could have been the Vladivostok at, with plunging fire, but I'm sure the Vlad's deck cannot be overmatched by five inch guns i'm i'm like 98.7 percent sure i'm like 100 percent sure but it could have been one of those weird bug citadels that occur frequently in this game because yeah which would be solved with training rooms but oh well i digress aa is 98 like i said one of the best aa cruisers in the game um now that you can tier up with tiers now that you can queue up with tier sevens um, this might be a fun, you know, ship to, to bring with your carrier just to melt planes. Maneuverability is pretty decent. I don't have any flags because I'm running out of boosters, but 33 knots and a pretty good rudder shift time. Again, you guys can do your whole agile thing with this, but that's not how you play the ship. Um, and Hipper will confirm it. <laughs> the lord of all agile cruisers. Um, but if you want to dodge that extra one shell, it may be helpful, you know, 18 minutes into the game when you've already lost because you're kiting in the back of the map. Uh, this ship is an island camper through and through. You saw it's a very passive playstyle, very passive, just shooting behind islands, which some people don't like. Uh, but that's how you have to play the ship in order to be successful. Um, you can't do, you can do the whole kiting thing, but again, without with uh, my Einstein build, you you have half the range. You don't have enough range to really be effective uh, with with the with the uh, the gun. So 15.3. That's honestly what I, I kind of play my Cleveland at, but. You, you don't, that's not enough range in legendary tier. Yamas can sit out there at 19 and a half, and you know, you, you need to push up, but with, with like 17 kilometer range, which I have on Scott, um, I think that's a good middle ground. Now, again, I don't think you need Coots Nets off with beyond range perk or running the reload modification, um, but you know, you, you don't need this, you don't need this perk, you don't need Coots Nets off. So, what do we say? What do we say? 17. 16.9. So, yeah, 17. I think that's a perfect middle ground. Um, I, I really like having armed and ready, but with, like you saw with punch through at, at uh, broadside battleships, probably a little bit closer than what I was shattering at. You will get, you will get, I've chunked a, a uh, conquer for 20k before. So, long enough video. That's the Wooster, guys. You guys know her. You've, you know her well. You've seen her before. Aaron hey, hey, out. Peace.